Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I hope all of you are doing good. Uh, in today's presentation, we'll be talking about uh, extra ocular muscles. Okay, extra ocular muscles. It is nothing but the muscles that is located outside the eyeball. So, what you're seeing in white is eyeball. These are extra ocular muscles. So, those are the muscles, nothing but that is helping for the eyeball to move in different directions. Okay, so when we are talking about extraocular, that means we learn that those are the muscles outside the eyeball. Uh, we also have intraocular muscles. Okay, just uh, uh, because we are talking about extraocular, I'm just talking about intraocular also. Intraocular is nothing but the muscles that is inside the eyeball. That is why it is intra. So uh, we have learned about these muscles, right? Uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, uvea. We were talking about this ciliary muscle, sphincter pupillae and dilator pupillae. Sphincter pupillae and dilator pupillae, both are the muscles that is located on the iris, okay, to reduce the pupil size and to increase the pupil size. So, these are the three muscles that is inside the eyeball. So, they are known as intraocular muscles. And, of course, these are the muscles that is extraocular muscles. So, in this presentation, we'll be discussing about extraocular muscles. So these are our uh, learning objectives. Okay, one to enumerate. Okay, enumerate is nothing but we should be able to know what are the name of those six or seven extraocular muscles, and from where those muscles are starting and 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 which position the muscle is inserting. Inserting is nothing but where it is joining the eyeball. We need to study the actions of extraocular muscles. What are the different actions? We are already aware of uh, the actions like uh, adduction, abduction, elevation, depression. We learned that in the uh, introduction to optometry classes. So those are the. So what are the actions of extraocular muscles? And of course, to describe different eye movements and which are the muscles that is involved in different eye movements. And at the end, to understand which nerves are controlling the movement of each of the extraocular muscles. So these are the objectives for us to learn today. So we have seven extraocular muscles. Okay, we have seven extraocular muscles. Um, so we already know the name of those, right? Superior rectus muscle. Okay, this is a superior rectus muscle. We have inferior rectus muscle. Okay, that muscle that is below the eyeball. Medial rectus, okay, this is the lateral rectus, which is the outside one. Medial rectus will be here inside, uh, that is running parallel to the medial wall. And lateral rectus, so superior, inferior, lateral, and medial, okay, towards the nose. Superior oblique, two oblique muscles, okay, you can see there is one here, this is the superior oblique. This one is the inferior oblique and there is one muscle that is known as levator palpebrae superioris. We already know what is palpebrae. Palpebrae stands for the eyelid. Okay, and levator, it is like an elevator. Okay, elevator means pulling to open. So you can see this muscle that is the levator palpebrae superioris. This will get attached to the upper eyelid okay so your levator palpebrae superioris will help for the eyelid to open and close okay so for example to open the eyelid okay that is the function of levator palpebrae superioris so we'll go into those those all those things in detail okay we'll see each of those muscles one by one now all right so before we go uh, in detail about the muscles first we will see uh, from where these muscles are originating originating is nothing but from where these muscles are starting okay so this is the reason why we learned about the orbit in the previous class okay so if you have not um, uh, visited or if you have not checked the orbit presentation i request all of you to learn the orbit presentation first then uh, come to the extraocular muscle presentation so that you will be able to understand it better so uh, 
these muscles are starting from the base of the orbit you can see this is the orbital margin right and you can see it is better more better here you can see here this is the one that is the uh, optic nerve that is going out of the eyeball and this optic nerve is going through a small opening okay, that we have already described that in the uh, orbit presentation right this opening is known as optic canal right okay so uh, optic canal or optic foramen okay you can see this green color thing here and through that canal or foramen your optic nerve is going behind the eye or behind the orbit so these recti muscles you can see these recti muscles or rectus muscles are originating from common tendinous ring okay also known as ctr okay another name of that is annulus of zin so these muscles are originating so this is the common tendinous ring okay you can see here this will be the uh, common tendinous ring will be here all those rectus muscles okay i'm not talking about oblique muscles the four rectus muscles that is the superior rectus inferior rectus medial rectus and lateral rectus are originating from common tendinous ring so now where is this ctr or common tendinous ring located at the apex of the orbit anterior to the optic foramen okay so what is the meaning of apex of the orbit okay so it is located at the apex of the orbit apex of the orbit is this one this is the apex of the orbit right this portion and anterior to the optic foramen okay so just in front of the optic foramen that is the position where you can see that in the green color that is the common see this one this is the common tendinous ring and you can already see four muscles starting from there right okay so this will be superior rectus this will be medial rectus because this is the medial wall of the orbit so if this is medial rectus this is lateral rectus this one is inferior rectus and you can see there is one more muscle behind it right that is your levator palpebrae superioris so remember the rectus muscles are originating from common tendinous ring okay or otherwise known as annulus of zin so here you remember the name common tendinous ring and where is it located it is located in the apex of the orbit and where is apex of the orbit that is the anterior to the optic foramen right so in this slide we will just see where are the muscles getting inserted okay so now whenever we are talking about a muscle we talk about its origin from where it is starting and insertion where it is joining or where it is inserting right so this is the common tendinous ring okay just in front of the optic uh, uh, canal or optic foramen and we know that your superior rectus your lateral rectus your medial rectus and inferior rectus are coming so these four recti muscles they insert now after taking uh, the origin or after it is beginning from the common tendinous ring it comes forward okay we will learn later okay how these muscles are coming forward and then it is getting inserted onto the sclera you can see that this muscle is coming and inserting to the sclera all these extraocular muscles are inserting to the sclera except levator palpebra levator palpebra superioris is inserting into the upper eyelid okay so uh, what is the location where these muscles are getting inserted onto the uh, sclera you can see that so now when we look at the, this is the cornea and this is the pupil and uh, this is the sclera uh, superior rectus right medial rectus lateral rectus and inferior rectus so medial rectus you can see here superior rectus 7.7 .7 millimeter from the limbus so from the limbus the superior rectus is getting inserted 7.7 .7 millimeter okay now lateral rectus is inserting 6.9 millimeter from the limbus so 
this is the limbus this is 6.9 millimeter from the limbus inferior rectus this is the limbus 6.5 millimeter from the limbus and medial rectus okay it is the 5.5 millimeter from the limbus so even if you do not remember that exact millimeter values okay just remember that medial rectus inserts closest to the limbus because medial rectus is 5.5 millimeter from the limbus this is the limbus this is closest and which is the farthest superior rectus is the farthest you can see this is the gap is more this gap is less so medial rectus is inserting closer to the limbus superior rectus is inserting far from the limbus compared to other two rectal muscles okay right so from this slide onwards we will uh, discuss about individual muscles okay we will be discussing about all four recti muscles we will be discussing about two oblique muscles and we'll also discuss about the levator palpebrae superior also that is a seventh muscle okay so each muscle will be discussed under these headings from where the muscle is originating we already learned that where it is getting inserted what is the course of the muscle course is nothing but from the origin till insertion how the muscle is traveling that is a course innervation which cranial nerve which nerve is supplying those muscles there are different nerves that is supplying different muscles so we have to learn those names of those nerves and what is a primary action okay so what is the primary function of those of individual extraocular muscles so in this uh, slide we'll be discussing about superior rectus muscle okay and we already know that okay it is in the superior part of the eyeball right so we already learned that uh, origin remember all rectus muscles are originating from common tendinous ring since that muscle is superior rectus it is originating from superior part of the common tendinous ring this is the common tendinous ring and it is the superior part of the common tendinous ring so this is a superior rectus insertion we all know that the, the all these muscles are inserting onto the limbus except the lps 7.7 millimeter from the limbus say for example limbus is not very clearly visible here okay imagine if this is a limbus position 7.7 millimeter from the limbus so remember easy to remember that course how the muscle is traveling from the common tendinous ring it runs parallel to the roof of the orbit this is a roof of the orbit okay superior rectus is running parallel to the roof of the orbit and below the levator palpebrae superioris muscle so this is the lps so lps is also running parallel to the roof of the orbit okay so this is the superior rectus superior rectus is running parallel to the roof of the orbit and below the lps this is the lps now which cranial nerve is supplying superior rectus remember that most of the cranial nerves sorry most of the extraocular muscles are supplied by oculomotor nerve oculomotor nerve is nothing but the third cranial nerve okay we will be discussing about these cranial nerves later on okay oculomotor nerve is the third cranial nerve and basically oculomotor nerve is the nerve that is supplying most of the extraocular muscles okay so since it is superior rectus it is a superior division of the oculomotor nerve so what is the primary action why a superior rectus is there the primary action is elevation elevation is nothing but to elevate the eyeball okay suppose for example if you are looking up when you are looking up this superior rectus muscle is helping you to look up okay here you can clearly see the superior rectus muscle in this muscle or in this picture the muscle that is given in green color that is the superior rectus muscle okay this is the lateral view lateral view is that we are looking from the 
outside or from the lateral side or from the lateral side this is the medial side so this is the lateral side this is the superior rectus muscle superior rectus muscle and you can see this is the common tendinous ring here and you can see the optic nerve is coming from this eye so this eye's optic nerve will come here this eye's optic nerve will come here it will join and then travel okay when we are learning about the optic nerve or the second cranial nerve we will learn about this um, little bit in more so this is a superior rectus superior rectus and by now you'll be able to remember all other recti muscles right this is a superior oblique your lateral rectus okay which is the muscle that is running above the superior rectus okay try to remember that is a levator palpebrae superioris all right in this present or in this slide we'll be discussing about inferior rectus muscle so superior rectus muscle uh, we discussed sufficiently right and in inferior rectus muscle again we'll see what is the origin we know that the origin is common tendinous ring where from where the lower limb or the inferior part of common tendinous ring because the length or this muscle is inferior rectus insertion it is inserting onto the limbus 6.5 millimeter from the limbus course it runs parallel to the floor of the orbit okay so this is the inferior rectus inferior rectus is running parallel to the floor superior rectus is running parallel to the roof easy to remember parallel to the floor and this inferior rectus is parallel to the superior rectus also okay so easy to remember in that way so which nerve is uh, supplying or which nerve is controlling again ocular motor nerve so superior rectus also ocular motor nerve inferior rectus is also ocular motor nerve which division inferior division when we were talking about superior rectus superior rectus was supplied by the superior division of ocular motor nerve inferior rectus is supplied by inferior division of ocular motor nerve easy to remember in that way also so what is the action action is depression depression is nothing but making the eyeball look down that is depression okay if you want to see something below okay when you're looking straight if you want to look down you look down right so the inferior rectus muscles will be pulling the eyeball for or looking down okay so that is depression so origin insertion course innervation and primary action so try to learn all these things by comparing to other muscles also try to remember the picture in your mind okay so one more important thing i need to tell inferior rectus is the shortest rectus muscle out of superior inferior medial and lateral inferior rectus is the shortest rectus muscle right so similar to the previous superior rectus picture okay the muscle that is colored in green that is the inferior rectus right so easy to remember inferior rectus is located inferiorly it is originating from the inferior part of the common tendinous ring okay and it is running parallel to the floor of the orbit okay superior rectus was running parallel to the roof of the orbit okay so you can see it over here this is the medial rectus okay right right so we uh, already discussed now about the superior rectus and inferior rectus in this slide we'll be discussing about the medial rectus let me take the laser pointer medial rectus muscle right so from this picture it is very clear this is a medial rectus your nose is here so this is a medial rectus muscle so it is origin okay both upper and lower parts of the common tendinous ring okay but if you are confusing you just try to remember from the medial part of the common tendinous ring there is no harm in saying that from the medial part of the common tendinous ring so medial rectus is originating from the medial part of the common tendinous ring and it is getting inserted onto the limbus 5.5 millimeter from the limbus we learned that 
uh, medial rectus muscle is the closest muscle to the limbus okay superior rectus is the farthest muscle okay it is inserting uh, around 7.7 .7 millimeter but this medial rectus is inserting around 5.5 .5 millimeter from the limbus okay how the muscle is traveling after taking the origin from the medial part of commutatinous ring it runs parallel to the medial wall see how easy to remember superior rectus runs parallel to the roof inferior rectus runs parallel to the floor medial rectus runs parallel to the medial wall of the orbit so which muscle is uh, sorry which nerve is supporting again oculomotor nerve right so oculomotor nerve this is the third muscle that is supplied by oculomotor nerve okay which division inferior division of the oculomotor nerve is supplied so we remember that superior rectus is supplied by the superior division of oculomotor nerve inferior rectus by the inferior division medial rectus also by the inferior division of oculomotor nerve what is the action adduction adduction is nothing but moving the eyeball towards the nose that is the meaning of adduction when the muscle is contracting the eyeball will move towards the nose okay so another important thing what you need to remember about medial rectus is medial rectus is the largest muscle among extraocular muscles so do not confuse with longest and largest largest muscle is the means much more bigger in size that is the meaning of largest okay the largest muscle is extraocular muscle means largest extraocular muscle or the is the medial rectus muscle right yes so on this uh, slide you can see the um, medial rectus muscle this is the medial rectus in green color and you can easily see the medial rectus okay the green color it is running parallel to the medial wall okay so this is a medial wall this is a lateral wall okay and you cannot see the roof because the roof is taken out that is why you can see the levator palpebra superioris and below the lps is the superior rectus muscle right so we came into the fourth rectus muscle or fourth recti muscle that is the lateral rectus muscle right so this is the lateral rectus okay and this is your nose so this is the medial side superior side and inferior side right it's originating from again common tendinous ring and from the lateral side of the common tendinous ring your common tendinous ring is here lateral side of the common tendinous ring of course so insertion of course it is inserting onto the limbus it is inserting means inserting onto the sclera 6.9 millimeter from the limbus this is the limbus 6.9 millimeter from the limbus so how it is traveling after originating from the common tendinous ring it is running parallel to the lateral wall see it is easy to remember then okay lateral wall lateral rectus parallel to the lateral wall superior rectus parallel to the roof inferior rectus parallel to the floor medial rectus parallel to the medial wall so it's easy to remember the course of each of these extraocular muscles right so which uh, nerve is controlling okay here we are discussing or we we are learning about another nerve that is abducens nerve okay so what is the difference here all the other three recti superior rectus inferior rectus and medial rectus all three rectus were supplied by the oculomotor nerve but the fourth rectus muscle that is the lateral rectus is controlled or supplied by abducens nerve okay so abducens nerve is the sixth cranial nerve you remember which was the third cranial nerve third cranial nerve was the it was the oculomotor nerve right second cranial nerve is the optic nerve so we already learned about three cranial nerves okay we'll be having a little bit slightly detailed explanation of cranial nerves in our next presentation so we will understand it even more better so what is the action of primary action of lateral rectus lateral rectus 
it is abduction abduction is nothing but looking towards the lateral side that is known as abduction looking towards the medial side towards your nose is known as adduction looking above is known as elevation looking below is known as depression right so now it is easy to remember superior rectus helps for elevation inferior rectus for depression medial rectus for adduction lateral rectus for abduction all right so this is the lateral rectus as in the previous occasions the muscle that is shaded in green is the lateral rectus you see it is originating from the lateral limb or lateral side of the uh, common tendinous string common tendinous string is here and it runs parallel to the lateral wall this is a lateral wall runs parallel lateral rectus okay and here is the common tendinous ring. So the function of lateral rectus is abduction. All right, so we are discussing about the oblique muscles now. We already discussed about the recti muscle. Uh, we are talking about the oblique muscle. So that is a superior oblique muscle. Now, why the name oblique? Oblique is nothing but, it is not straight, it is at an angle. Now, you remember the superior rectus, lateral rectus, medial rectus, all these muscles were straight muscles, right? Like a straight line and inserting straight onto the eyeball. Now, you look at the superior oblique. Now, look at the pointer. The pointer is coming along the superior oblique muscle. It is attaching to the globe at an angle, right? there is an angle right this is the angle there is an angle and it is attaching not straight on the globe so that is why its name oblique since the position is on the superior part of the globe that is why it is known as superior oblique now from where it is starting origin origin is from the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone now do you remember sphenoid bone when we were uh, talking about uh, the orbital walls okay this sphenoid bone has two wings one is a lesser wing another one is a greater wing so our superior oblique muscle is starting from the lesser wing of sphenoid bone now where it is getting inserted this is not very straightforward okay so the muscle is getting inserted or joining the globe at the superior posterior lateral quadrant of the globe now let me explain you what is that okay let me take a pen now superior posterior lateral quadrant isn't it now let me divide the eyeball into four quadrants right remember this is the superior part of the eyeball so these two are uh, anterior quadrant these two are posterior quadrant quadrant is nothing but one fourth or quarter okay so this is the anterior quadrant anterior quadrant so now this will be anterior lateral quadrant this will be anterior medial quadrant now there are two posterior quadrants this will be uh, posterior as well as lateral quadrant this is posterior and medial quadrant right so now where is this superior oblique is getting inserted okay you can see it is getting inserted here right it is getting inserted here so what is that uh, superior posterior okay this is a superior part of the eyeball okay it is getting inserted to the superior side superior part of the eyeball yes posterior right it is coming to the posterior of the globe this is the anterior this is the posterior of the globe superior side and posterior and in which quadrant lateral quadrant this is the lateral quadrant this is the medial quadrant it is not coming to the medial quadrant so it is taking an insertion at the lateral quadrant of the globe right now you got it superior coming to the posterior side and coming to the lateral part of the eyeball so it is getting inserted there now what is the course course means how the lens sorry how the muscle is traveling 
let me take the lesser point it will be much more easier right so course it is starting from the lesser wing of sphenoid and then it is passing parallel to the medial wall right it is running parallel to the medial wall then it passes through the trochlea okay now what is trochlea trochlea it is a u-shaped piece of cartilage attached to the orbital flate of the frontal bone at the superior medial side it is nothing but this is a cartilage it is a u-shaped cartilage which is seen at the superior nasal part of the uh, orbital roof right in fact it is the orbital roof at the orbital roof it is seen so this trochlea is helping the muscle to change its direction right it was coming forward it is helping to change its direction right so runs parallel to the medial wall pass through the trochlea moves inferior to the superior rectus now after moving from the trochlea goes below or underneath the superior rectus this is a superior rectus muscle goes underneath it right and attaches to the superior posterior lateral quadrant we already discussed that this is the superior posterior lateral quadrant of the globe so that is how the course of the superior oblique muscle now which nerve is controlling this muscle the innervation okay so here we are learning about another uh, another uh, nerve that is a fourth cranial nerve that is a trochlear nerve okay remember trochlear trochlear nerve is only for the superior oblique muscle right why the name trochlear because the superior oblique is passing through the trochlea okay so trochlea is only for superior oblique so the nerve's name is also trochlear nerve okay that is a fourth cranial nerve okay now do you remember the other cranial nerves what we discussed one is the oculomotor nerve that is a third cranial nerve three rectus muscles were controlled by that uh, oculomotor nerve one was superior rectus another one was inferior rectus the third one was medial rectus right when we are talking about the lateral rectus that was supplied by abducens nerve that is a sixth cranial nerve now coming to the superior oblique muscle that is controlled by trochlear nerve why the name trochlear because the trochlea is unique or only for the troch i mean superior oblique muscle so it is controlled by the fourth cranial nerve fourth cranial nerve is trochlear third one is oculomotor sixth one is um, abducens right now what is the action primary action is in torsion it in torsion is nothing but rotating the eyeball towards the nose okay in torsion is rotating the eyeball towards the nose so its primary action is in torsion now there is a couple of interesting thing about superior oblique superior oblique is the longest muscle as well as the thinnest muscle right superior oblique is the longest and thinnest thinnest remember which one was the largest muscle largest muscle was the medial rectus muscle right okay so that is about the superior oblique okay it is slightly different from the rectus muscles right so here we have a slightly different uh, view of the superior oblique uh, muscle right so uh, here you go the green color one is a superior oblique okay it is not taking uh, the insertion from the sorry origin is not from the common tendinous ring all these origins are very close to but it is the superior oblique is taking origin from a bone that is the lesser wing of sphenoid and you can see this one this is the trochlea through the trochlea it is coming and it is coming and inserting at the superior posterior temporal quadrant of the eyeball so that is your superior oblique you can see it much more easier from here runs parallel to the medial wall passes through the trochlea okay goes underneath the superior rectus and takes 
an insertion in the superior and posterior and lateral quadrant of the eyeball so think that okay the eyeball what is the function ability to rotate the eyeball so when this muscle is acting okay it will pull the eyeball and help to rotate towards the medial side okay so that is in torsion right so we have completed the first oblique muscle we are coming into the second oblique muscle that is the inferior oblique muscle so now we already understood now why we call it as an oblique muscle isn't it now uh, from where this inferior oblique muscle is taking uh, the origin or originating it is originating from the maxillary bone now do you remember the maxillary bone this is a maxillary bone that is the floor of the orbit that is a maxillary bone and it is the only muscle to have origin at the anterior part of the orbit now do you remember all other recti muscles all four recti muscles were taking the origin from the posterior side of the eyeball or posterior side of the orbit right and even superior oblique also inferior oblique is the only muscle that is taking origin from the anterior part and from where from which bone it is from the maxillary bone now where is maxillary bone i hope you you would have uh, you would be remembering what we discussed in the orbit lecture maxillary bone is nothing but the bone on your cheek that is a maxillary bone and so this the whole bone is a maxillary bone and you can see this is the inferior oblique so now where it is getting inserted it is getting inserted the posterior portion of the globe this is the anterior portion of the globe right posterior portion behind at the inferior lateral area now where is the inferior lateral this side is a superior lateral this side is a superior medial this side is the inferior medial and this side is the inferior lateral okay so it is getting inserted at the posterior side at the inferior and lateral not anterior posterior part of the eyeball inferior and lateral so now how the muscle is moving it runs from the medial corner of the orbit this is the medial corner of the orbit in fact inferior medial corner of the orbit it goes below inferior rectus okay so inferior rectus is here cannot see it in this picture it goes below the inferior rectus and goes to the lateral aspect okay this is the lateral aspect of the globe right and where in the lateral side it is getting inserted at the inferior lateral part of the globe now which nerve is controlling this muscle mm, you see oculomotor nerve is coming again so oculomotor nerve is controlling the inferior oblique also now do you remember what are the other three muscles that was controlled by oculomotor one was superior rectus second inferior rectus third medial rectus okay so medial rectus and the fourth muscle from uh, the oculomotor nerve is the inferior oblique muscle what is its action the action is extorsion extorsion is nothing but rotating the eyeball towards the outside that is extorsion right so this is a different view of uh, inferior oblique muscle right this is the anterior view and this is the lateral view now if you remember the bones of the orbit okay you can uh, try to remember it over here this is the frontal bone this is the maxillary bone this one is a maxillary bone that is your cheek bone and this is a zygomatic bone zygomatic frontal and maxillary right so you can see that the inferior oblique is taking the origin from the maxillary bone it is taking from the anterior part of the orbit and it goes below the inferior rectus so this red one is inferior rectus goes below the inferior rectus and goes posterior right posterior 
and as well as the inferior so and lateral posterior lateral and inferior part of the globe you can see it over here right it is starting from the maxilla right goes between the floor and the inferior rectus and goes behind isn't it see inferior lateral part of the eyeball right so in this slide we'll be discussing about levator palpebrae superioris so this is a seventh cranial sorry seventh uh, extraocular muscle that we'll be discussing so we finished four rectus muscles right two oblique muscles also we finished and this is the last one among the extraocular muscles levator palpebrae superioris so levator is nothing but something that is helping to elevate or lift palpebrae okay stands for the eyelid superioris at the superior portion so from where it is originating okay again it is originating from the lesser wing of sphenoid now do you remember another muscle that is originating from the lesser wing of sphenoid it is the superior oblique muscle so superior oblique muscle is also originating from the lesser wing of sphenoid right and it is insertion where it is getting inserted it is not getting inserted onto the eyeball right it is getting inserted onto the upper or superior eyelid upper eyelid so it is helping to open the eyelid right when you are waking up in the morning when you open the eyelid your means levator palpebrae superioris is acting so that you can open the eye so this is the LPS or levator palpebrae superioris. What is the course? How the muscle is traveling? Okay, from the lesser wing of sphenoid, it travels between superior rectus and the roof of the orbit. You see, superior rectus is below. Okay, it is between this is superior rectus and this is LPS, and above that is roof of the orbit. Which cranial nerve is supporting LPS? It is supported by the again you see ocular motor nerve so ocular motor nerve is supplying most of the extraocular muscles right and also the superior division superior rectus was also supplied by the superior division so ocular motor nerve is supplying now out of seven cranial nerves it is supplying how many cranial nerves it is supplying five cranial nerves sorry five extraocular muscles it is supplying only the lateral rectus and superior oblique is supplied by different nerves so oculomotor motor is nothing but the movement that is why the nerve's name is oculomotor this is a nerve that is helping for the eye to move okay so majority of the extraocular muscles are supplied by oculomotor nerve what is the action it has nothing to do with the eyeball you see it is not joining the eyeball so at the action is elevating the upper eyelid so it is only for the eyelid this muscle all right um, so in this slide we will quickly look at the different action of the extraocular muscles right so uh, we have already learned these actions even in introduction to optometry adduction abduction elevation depression intorsion and extorsion right now what is adduction moves the eye towards the nose okay your nose is here this is adduction and this is abduction right moving the eyeball away from the nose that is abduction moving the eyeball towards the nose is adduction generally when the, when one eye comes towards the nose the other eye will be moving away from the nose because both the eyes are moving together okay it is a synchronized movement so now you understood adduction adduction is moving towards the nose abduction moving away from the nose elevation okay lifting moves the eye upward so this is the elevation so your superior rectus muscle is acting here it is contracting and taking the eyeball up depression opposite to elevation okay the person is looking down the eyeball is going down so inferior rectus is controlling it 
okay it is contracting and taking the eyeball down so we finished four movements in torsion in torsion is nothing but rotate the top of the eye towards the nose now when you're rotating the eye towards the nose that is in torsion okay let me take a pen and then mark it okay now in torsion is this moving rotating okay in that is in torsion now extortion extortion is again rotating out right this is extortion rotate the top of the eye towards the nose that is in torsion rotate the top of the eye away from the nose so this is extortion this is in torsion imagine your nose is here right so those are the six actions adduction abduction do not confuse about the spellings elevation depression in torsion and extortion right in the previous slide we learned about what are the different eye movements right adduction abduction in torsion extortion elevation depression now in this slide we will learn which extraocular muscles are helping to do those actions now adduction we learned that moving the eyeball towards the nose your medial rectus is doing adduction so medial rectus has only one action adduction so opposite to adduction is abduction your lateral rectus is taking care of abduction so lateral rectus also has only one action that is adduction sorry abduction now superior rectus inferior rectus it has primary action as well as it has secondary action primary action is superior rectus is elevation taking the eyeball up inferior rectus is depression now you will have to remember this okay superior rectus has another two secondary actions in torsion and adduction inferior rectus has again two secondary actions extortion and adduction okay now coming into superior oblique the primary action is in torsion okay that is uh, rotating the top of the eye towards the nose that is in torsion and it has two secondary actions depression and abduction and inferior oblique the primary action is extortion taking the top of the eye away from the nose and it has two secondary actions that is elevation and abduction now uh, it, it, it will be easy for you to remember the primary actions okay so try to remember the primary actions okay adduction abduction elevation depression in torsion and extortion okay remember the primary actions secondary actions you can uh, try to remember with one uh, equation here okay so can you see at the bottom okay you can see that equation sin rad okay sin rad is uh, sin stands for all superiors are in total so remember that what is sin rad means okay if you remember sin rad you will be able to write all the actions of the muscles right so sin rad means all superiors are in torters and all recti are adductors so that is why sin rad see r a d rad s i n sin okay sin rad sin rad so sin rad means all superiors are in tortus all recti are adductors except lateral rectus okay so that is the meaning of sin rad so now we will see that in the next slide okay so even from here we can understand this all superiors are in tortus look at this is a superior right superior rectus this is another superior right all superior both superior rectus and superior oblique are in tortus you see superior is in torsion right and superior oblique is in torsion right so all superiors are in tortus and all recti are adductors now uh, medial rectus is 
adduction uh, superior rectus is adduction inferior rectus is adduction right except lateral rectus lateral rectus is abduction okay so it is a mix of secondary and primary action so what i would say is you need to remember the primary actions clearly okay the primary actions there should not be any confusion then we will be able to write the secondary actions right so in the previous slide we discussed about uh, the actions of extraocular muscles right because uh, not a, a each of the extraocular muscles some of the muscles are only having primary actions but uh, most of the muscles are having either um, it has primary action as well as it has uh, two secondary actions so uh, as I mentioned you it will be difficult for uh, you to remember it like that so there is an easy way of uh, remembering it SINRAD what is SINRAD all superiors are in tortoise all superiors are in tortus and all recti are adductus except lateral ductus now we'll see okay how we will uh, use this to fill this table so that we'll be able to remember the actions of extraocular muscles so uh, what i would say first is try to write down all the primary actions you already know what are the primary actions so medial rectus has a primary action of adduction Lateral rectus have primary action of abduction, right? Superior rectus is elevation, right? Inferior rectus is depression. Superior oblique is intorsion, and inferior oblique is extorsion. Okay, so write these uh, primary actions you write down first. Now we try to fill in the secondary actions. Now there are no second reactions for medial rectus and no second reaction for the lateral rectus it has only or these muscles have only primary actions now what is the synrad all superiors are in tortus now we already written one superior that is uh, in torsion here and which is another superior so that is superior rectus so it has a second reaction of in torsion all superiors are in tortus okay now uh, what is the next one all recti are adductors all recti are adductors so you have uh, you do not have medial rectus and lateral rectus will not come into picture okay so this superior rectus right so all recti are adductors so now we completed the second reactions of superior rectus now there is one more recti inferior rectus okay so that is also adductors okay now if all superiors are in tortus that means all inferiors are ex tortus remember if all superiors are in tortus that means inferiors are extortus now we already have an inferior oblique we have written extortion there is one more inferior right that is inferior rectus so that inferior rectus is extortion right so now we completed the second reactions of superior rectus and inferior rectus right all superiors are in tortus if superiors are in tortus inferiors are extortus all recti are all recti are adductors that means if recti are adductors obliques are abductors right so this oblique is abductor and this oblique is also abductor fine now we have only two secondary actions one secondary action of superior oblique and another second reaction of inferior oblique is remaining okay now one of it has elevation another one has depression remember in, in case of obliques superior superiors are depressors okay and inferior are elevators 
okay so that is how we completed it now okay you can see it okay write down the primary actions first adduction abduction elevation depression intorsion and extorsion finish for writing the secondary actions you use this synrad all superiors are intortus so we have a superior oblique here already we have written intorsion one more superior that is superior rectus we wrote intorsion if superiors are intortus inferiors are extortus so what are the inferiors inferior oblique we have already written extortion one more inferior that is inferior rectus we wrote extortion right now we come to the second part of the equation all recti are adductors now we do not have second reactions for medial and lateral rectus so you have only two recti superior rectus inferior rectus right adduction adduction done so if recti are adductors that means obliques are abductors so we wrote abduction and abduction so now only one second reaction for superior oblique is remaining another second reaction for inferior oblique is remaining that means depression okay so elevation and depression are remaining remember that superior oblique will help for depression inferior oblique will help for elevation so that is how you write down the actions of each extraocular muscles right so uh, like how we now try to remember the actions of extraocular muscles sin rad similarly there is another equation uh, that will help us to learn what is the or which uh, cranial nerves are supplying the extraocular muscle so we already know that majority of the cranial nerves are supplied by oculomotor nerve okay you can easily see that okay try to remember from our discussions okay oculomotor nerve right this is ocular motor here you can see ocular motor here you can see ocular motor here and here and here totally five muscles are supplied by ocular motor nerve out of seven okay so ocular motor nerve is the third cranial nerve right and other two cranial nerves that is other than ocular motor nerve is one is cranial nerve six that is the abduction nerve Cranial nerve 4 that is the trochlear nerve and we already know trochlear is related to trochlea and trochlea is related to superior oblique okay and lateral rectus is supplied by abducens nerve which is the sixth cranial nerve okay now this is the equation that will help us to remember SO4 LR6 O3. So now what is this SO4 LR6 O3? SO4 means SO is superior oblique, superior oblique by fourth cranial nerve, which is the fourth cranial nerve, trochlear nerve. Okay. LR lateral rectus by sixth cranial nerve, which is a sixth cranial nerve, abducens nerve. So all other muscles are supplied by O oculomotor. So SO4 LR6 O3 that means superior oblique by fourth cranial nerve trochlear LR6 lateral rectus by sixth cranial nerve abducens all other muscles are supplied by the third cranial nerve that is the oculomotor nerve. So that is how you easily remember which cranial nerve is supplying which muscle. All right, so here is the last slide of the presentation. So it's exactly going to be one hour, the presentation, right? So uh, what is this? This is the SO4 LR6 O3. Very easy to remember, right? SO4, SO4 is superior oblique. This is the fourth cranial nerve. LR6, LR6 is the lateral rectus, sixth cranial nerve. That is uh, the abducent, right? Right, and this is the trochlear right and o3 all other this is three this is three this is three this is three and lps also three so one two three four five so including levator palpebra superioris okay and um, there are five muscles that is supplied by the 
uh, ocular motor nerve. So that finishes the presentation of extraocular muscles. Okay, I hope it is 